From Washington, this is VOA News. Coming up, the latest on the Ebola outbreak and saving a Syrian border town from Islamic State militants. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Norman. The first Ebola patient diagnosed in the United States died Wednesday in Dallas. Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital said Dr. Eric Duncan died 10 days after he entered the facility, came to Dallas on September 20th from his native Liberia, the epicenter of the West African Ebola outbreak. The chief of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, Dr. Thomas Frieden, says he's deeply saddened by Duncan's death, calling him to face the people associated with Ebola. Frieden says there cannot be a zero risk for Ebola in the United States as long as the outbreak continues in West Africa. The White House says U.S. military is limited in what it can do to try to stop the Syrian border town of Kobani from falling to Islamic State. And the U.S. Secretary of State says the strategy for the coalition battling Islamic State militants in Syria and Iraq is still evolving. Mr. Kerry said decisions about the role of Turkey and other countries will be coming within hours or days. These things have to be done in a thoughtful and careful way so everybody understands who is doing what and what the implications are of their doing it and where you go as a result. Six coalition airstrikes Wednesday helped Kurdish fighters push back Islamic State militants. Afghan authorities have executed five men convicted of gang rape despite allegations of flawed legal proceedings. Former President Ahmed Karzai signed the execution order last month on the last day that he was in office. This is VOA News. Kenya's President Uru Kenyatta appeared before the International Criminal Court in The Hague on Wednesday for a hearing that may determine whether the Crimes Against Humanity case against him is dropped or postponed indefinitely. Judges are expected to make a decision by the end of the year. Lisa Bryant reports. President Uhuru Kenyatta was greeted by cheering supporters outside the courtroom, but he remained silent during the three-hour hearing at the International Criminal Court. Instead, his defense lawyer, Stephen Kay, made a vigorous argument the Kenyan leader be acquitted of the charges against him. He is entitled to his verdict of not guilty because there are no further inquiries going on. It is plainly not the case that was brought against him that can be sustained at all. Mr. Kenyatta faces five counts at the Hague Base Court for his alleged role in overseeing post-election violence in Kenya between 2007 and 2008. Lisa Bryant for VOA News, Paris. Mali's foreign minister is warning his country is at risk of becoming a destination for hordes of terrorists as attacks by armed groups have increased. UN correspondent Margaret Bashir has more. Foreign Minister Abdullahi Diop called for all armed groups to renounce terrorism and accept the extended hand of the government. He urged the UN Security Council to review and strengthen the mandate of its nearly 10,000 member peacekeeping force so that it could better protect civilians. He spoke from Bamako via a video link and is heard here through an interpreter. Perhaps uh, the council should consider setting up a a rapid intervention force which is capable of effectively fighting terrorists. He warned that drug traffickers and jihadists have returned to northern Mali and he expressed concern about increased attacks on UN peacekeepers. Margaret Bashir, VOA News, the United Nations. Three scientists, Americans Eric Betzig and William Mortar, plus German Stefan Hennel, have won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. 
They were recognized for their development of microscopes so powerful they can be used to see how diseases develop inside the tiniest living cells. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences announced the $1.1 million prize on Wednesday. U.S. health officials say Americans are living longer than ever with life expectancy moving up and death rates falling. Using 2012 data, the government said Wednesday the life expectancy for a child born then, now almost 79 years. Infant mortality rate in the country dropped to a low of just under six deaths out of the first 1,000 births, although the U.S. rate continues to be higher than most European countries. That's the latest world news from BOA.